I know you men have accepted money to make trouble in this camp. Now listen. There's a broken jaw waiting for every one of you if you're not out of here by sundown. Have gun. Will travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco. 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Mr. Paladin! Mr. Paladin! Yes, over here, hey boy. Oh, Mr. Paladin, a telegram come for you. Oh, thank you. Ah. Listen to this, hey boy. Would you consider a job foreman railroad construction crew? Need you, Wilway, Nevada, urgent Alan Hurley. Oh, did huh. man make a joke, Mr. Paladin? Foreman railroad construction crew? Well, I know this Alan Hurley, hey boy. I don't think he means it as a joke. I don't believe this telegram exactly covers the situation. Mr. Paladin, hey boy advised do not accept offer. Oh, why not? Oh, uh, hey boy, one time with members of Celestial Dragon Society work a railroad. Who? Very hard work. Borman was very tough. Oh, so you don't think I'm man enough for the job? All right. Uh, you want to be like that, you go ahead. Uh, we don't pack guns. Pack a pick and shovel. So you find out. Oh, no, sir. No pick and shovel for me. If I'm the foreman, I'm the boss. You hear? Oh, you're a tough boss. <laughs> you bet. So you ought to be tough boss. Oh, telegram say urgent. So we go pack now? Well, maybe there's time for another cognac and coffee. Uh, please, hey, boy. Uh, yes, sir. And listen, hey boy, let's make no mistake about packing the gun. I'm sure Alan Hurley doesn't want to hire me just on my merit as a construction crew foreman. Constipation can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, close to natural acting. A medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, X-Lax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because chocolated X-Lax is effective. Overnight... It helps you toward your normal regularity. X-Lax is so gentle, so close to natural acting, there's no upset. That's why many doctors and millions of people use X-Lax with complete confidence. X-Lax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity, gently, overnight. Where the train stopped to let me off, there was a water tank, a corral, and a framed building with a big sign that said, Pat Casey, hauling. The one road that led from the railroad tracks was narrow, banked by sheer, rugged cliffs. I made the 99 miles to Willway in discomfort in a sort of combination freight and passenger, mule-drawn coach, obviously a Pat Casey enterprise. When we finally reached Willway, we pulled up in front of a saloon adjoining the freight yard, and I went in. There was one other customer in the place, an old gray-haired man who was having an argument with a bartender. I didn't get the gist of the words, but I saw the old man reach for his gun when suddenly a long bullwhip flicked out from the top of the stairway and snaked around the man's gun arm, jerking it upward and sending a bullet wild into the ceiling. You know, I won't have that in my place. It's robbery. That's what it is, robbery. Take his gun, Vince. Now, unwind the whip from his wrist. All right, Buster, what's your problem? I got some more. I got to get the railroad. Yesterday, he said when I come in, I could have a mule train for $400. Today, he tells me $700. 700 Vince told you that? Yes, ma'am, he did. Vince was mistaken. The train will cost you $1,000. 1000 I can't pay it. Oh, it's a shame. Oh, you can always walk over the mountain. Ah, oh, you. And here, take your gun. You'll need it. 
Now, you're not going to get away with this forever. You wait. Just you wait. Now, what can I do for you, mister? Uh, oh, I just stopped in for a drink, um... That's quite a trick, that uh, thing with the whip. Yeah, I learned that for a vaudeville term some years ago. It comes in handy. Vince, give the stranger a drink. I'll be up in my office. I'm busy. I don't want to be bothered unless it's important. Sure, Casey. Casey? That's Pat Casey. Yeah, uh, uh, Pat Casey Hauling? Yep. Well, what do you know? Pretty, ain't she? I ought to see her when she's got on one of them fancy dresses instead of them men's clothes. Well, that old man in here, she was a little rough on him, wasn't she? He ought to know. It don't pay to get Casey riled. Anybody's got a mind to do any freighting out of here has got to deal with Pat Casey. And it's easier when she ain't riled. I mean, he got his oar this far, couldn't he use his own animals? Casey owns the right of way. Do business with her, or like she said, go over the mountain. <laughs> Quite a setup. Quite a woman. Mm. Which way is the King's Hotel? Out the door and to your left. Thanks. Hello, Hurley. Oh, Paladin, come in. Thanks. Oh, I'm glad you got here. Sit down, sit down. Yeah. Your wire said urgent. Urgent. <laughs> Minutes count, Paladin. We're working against a deadline so important that if we don't meet it, it means ruin. Ruin? Well, most of us citizens of Willway invested our whole future in the future of this town. But that was some time ago when we heard that the Central Pacific Railway was coming through here. Ah, uh, and instead they laid their tracks 99 miles away. Yes. Yeah. And at first we thought Willway was going to be another ghost town. Yeah, it's a sad thing to see a town die. Well, we weren't going to bury it without a fight. There was one chance to save it a connection with the railroad. So we promoted our own line. We're laying a narrow-gauge track that connects with the Central Pacific. It's quite an undertaking. Well, it's been a battle all the way. Now that the end is in sight, it looks like we might lose after all. What's that? Well, we, we've got opposition. Top opposition. One Pat Casey. <laughs> Pat Casey? I just had the pleasure. <laughs> well, you'd be surprised how much weight that, that woman can throw around. She fought us on the franchise, she fought us on the financial backing, now she's fighting us on construction. Well, I can see your point. The railway will certainly cut into that lucrative little business she has set up. Now, the track's been laid to just 12 miles outside of town. We've got three weeks to finish it or lose our franchise. 12 miles in three weeks? Well, you ought to be able to do that. Oh, under ordinary circumstances, yes. But not the way we're going. One delay after another. Trouble among the men, trouble with the equipment, all kinds of trouble that consumes precious time. Trouble instigated by Casey? Yes. Now, we need your help. We've got to meet that deadline. You expect me to fight a woman? That's why I sent for you. Hurley, look. Paladin, I'll lay odds you never had a craftier adversary. Seems to me you have picked pretty rough country for your railroad. Took our engineer and a party of surveyors exactly a year to lay out a route through here. This, uh, runs parallel to Casey's right away? Just five miles east. Oh, there's the construction camp down there. Listen, when I meet the men, you'll introduce me as the new foreman, is that right? Yes. Figured that'd be the way you could really keep your eye on what's going on. I'm hardly qualified to boss a construction crew. Well, the engineer will help you on any technical points. All you have to do is be tough. Tough? That seems to be it. Found out our last foreman was being paid off by Casey. Guess her money is buying all your trouble. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, oh. Oh. What's going on down there? That's the mess tent. Sounds like a riot. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. I said quiet. Now, what's going on here? Answer me. What's the meaning of this? We ain't eating this slop. That's uh, what we want to do. Meal time is over anyway. Get back in the job. Well, just who were you giving them orders? I'm bossing this outfit. Now, get back in the job. You hear? Yeah, I hear you, mister. But I don't like the sound of you. You want to do something about it? Yeah. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, hey. 
Next. All right. Anyone next? I know this man on the ground here was accepting money to make trouble in this camp. Now you listen to me. There's a broken jaw waiting for every one of you on that payroll, every one of you taking that dirty money. If you're not out of camp by sundown. You really scared them. Getting tough didn't seem to help the cause any, did it? <laughs> Out of 30 men, we've got two left. Well, those men wouldn't have done you any good. Casey was paying him off to see that the road was never completed. It's a cinch she'd get her money's worth. Well, she's managed to accomplish her purpose anyway. What do you mean? I mean we've been defeated, Paladin. By the time we have left, we'll never be able to get another crew together. You mean there's no place around here you can line up some men willing to work? Oh, we tried. These fellows we had all came from out of the state. Early, exactly how much remains to be done? Well... We blasted the cuts and laid in the culverts to put up the trestle work. All we need now are men who can swing a pick and shovel and lay down 12 mile of track. Wait. The pick and shovel? Oh, wait a minute. What? I think I can get you a crew, Hurley. Let's get back to town. I want to send a telegram. Hurley... This is King Chang, otherwise known as Hayboy. Those gentlemen lined up back there, the members of the Celestial Dragon Society, are all ready to go to work. Please. Well, I certainly want to thank you, Hayboy, you and your friends, for coming to our rescue. Oh, uh, Hayboy, tell member of Celestial Dragon Society, hard work, tough boss. What is time? Telegram say, Misa Paladin need help. You better go. Uh, what did you tell the Carlton Hotel, Hayboy? Oh, I tell her. Carlton Hotel, hey boy, Moscow, have uncle in Salinas, very sick. Oh, no. Hey, boy, you didn't use that old story about your sick uncle in Salinas again. Oh, you thought, always work. Uh, hey, listen, hey, boy, we have less than two weeks now to lay 12 miles of track. Do you think you can do it? Oh, sure. Don't you worry, Mr. Harley. All right, hey, boy, the ties are stacked up by the railhead back there. The rails are on the flat car. Well, I want you to know those ties are worth their weight in gold. We had to scout around sawmills as far away as Wyoming to get those. Hey, boy, get the boys lined up with picks and shovels. We'll get to work. Uh, excuse me, please, but I uh, look uh, like maybe you better do something quick. Uh, uh, look like a smoke come from where ties are stacked. Oh, hey, he's right. They're on fire. Tell him the fire's no accident. If those go up, we're finished. Come on. Get the water buckets. Hey, boy, get the boys lined up to fight fire. face early. No, because we're licked. You know it. A week and a day to go. The boys have been cutting ties in that stand of trees oh, up the canyon. Oh, yes, yes, I know. It's a good try, Pellet. Early, you'd be surprised at what they've accomplished. I talked to your chief engineer. He figures that with what we've managed to save from the fire, we've got enough to finish the job. He still thinks it can be done in time? Well, providing we can haul those ties down from the canyon immediately, but we'll need every mule in the county. Oh, <laughs> Well, you know who has all the mules in the county. Yeah. And I'm going to make a deal to hire them. Oh, you're out of your mind. Maybe. But it's worth a try. And now, here are Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Charlie, where have you been? Well, it's a long story, Bergen. Remember, you said you wanted the car lubricated. I said I wanted a Guardian maintenance lubrication. Like all Chevrolet's Pontiacs, Oldsmobile, Buicks, Cadillacs, and Chevy and GMC trucks, our car deserves the best of service. And that means Guardian maintenance at our dealer service department. Yes, well, I drove our car to our dealers without an accident. Oh? Most of the way. Charlie, where's the car now? It's on Main Street between 4th and 5th. Is it closer to 4th or 5th? It's all the way from 4th to 5th. All right, young man, you're going to get it now. <laughs> I'm only kidding, Bergen. It's just a scratch fender. Our dealer's GM trained mechanics have already got it looking like new again. It's part of their quality appearance service. Shall I still meet you in the woodshed? You drove the car without permission. It's the woodshed. And I'll see you there as soon as I phone the dealer. Well, take your time. If you're not there in ten minutes, I'll start without you. <laughs> Hello, 
Hello, Vince. Oh, hello. Pat Casey in. Upstairs in her office. Want a drink? Later. Hey, you can't go up there. You want up that? Yes? Hey, what's the idea? Well, Vince was right. He was? Ah. He told me I should see you in a fancy dress sometime. Instead of those boys' clothes. Hmm? Lovely. Mister, I know how I look in a dress. I also know you with that railroad outfit. Now, what do you want? Yeah. I want to hire your mules. It'll cost you. It'll pay. When you want them? Mm Hmm? I said, when do you want them? Uh, I'm sorry. I was afraid I, I was expecting a fight. Does this mean you've come to realize how important the railroad is to Wilway? I'm not interested in anything that isn't important to Pat Casey. But why the change of heart? I can relax now. The country will take over. Have you looked at the sky? No. I know this country, mister. It fights back. I know it's going to rain. I know it's going to rain hard. I know it might even flood in those mountains. You'll never get those tracks laid in time, even if you have my mules. We'll take the chance. You fight hard. You do, too. Mine's a dedicated fight. It has to be. I swore I'd wipe the name of this town off the map, and I've just about got it done. Why so bitter? I was with a show troupe. My partner and I got stranded in this town. He was a sweet guy. The town wasn't very nice to us. We were used to that. But my partner was sick. Maybe if the town had been a little nicer, he'd be alive. I have the least idea why I told you that. I don't think a person in Woolway remembers. I'm glad you did tell me. All right. You can pick up the mules when the money's on the line. I'm busy. Ah, uh, over here, hey boy. Oh, Mr. Paladin, a uh, boy found spikes in the last piece of track, but still has three miles to go. Yeah, I know, hey, boy. That track ought to be here any minute now. It was on a siding at the other end of our line. I saw it. But, uh, Mr. Paladin, time short. Yeah, I realize that. Midnight tonight. Oh, somebody come. Probably early. Well, he'll know just when the track will get here. Mm-hmm. What about the track, Hurley? It won't get here. Yeah. What do you mean? Flat car was derailed eight miles up the way by a flood. The rails are buried in a wash, and there's no possible way to get them out in time. You mean this beats us with only three miles to go? How do you like that? At midnight tonight, because of those three miles, we lose our franchise. Oh, my, it must be something. Uh, Hurley, mm-hmm. Hurley, how does that contract read? Well, we agreed to have track laid from the Central Pacific lines to the city limits in a specified time. And we're just three miles short of the city limits? Yes, I'm afraid so. All right. You know about the mountain coming to Muhammad, don't you? What are you talking about? Can you call a special meeting of the Willway City Council? What, now? Yes, it's an emergency. Why? In view of the potential growth of Willway, I think we should point out to the City Council that they should be far-sighted enough to allow room for that growth by extending the city limits three miles. Before midnight tonight. Oh, 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 Paladin. Paladin, that sheer genius. Oh, Mr. Paladin, you his head, huh? Well, hey, boy, it usually figures that you can get further that way than by being tough. Come on, let's go. Beat that deadline. Well, this is a big day for our town. Pretty exciting. Oh, it's just about time. Train go. Wait, go in. Move that thing. Hey. That's Pat Casey. Mr. Hollis back, will you? Will I climb on that thing? Well, of course, here. here. You're leaving Willway, Casey? Yeah, I had enough. Stay too long as it is. Here, allow me up. Oh, thanks. There. Just put the bag down there. I understand you're from Cisco. Yeah. I may get out that way sometime. I'll look you up. Yeah. Paladin. Carlson Hotel. I'll remember. So long. Good luck, Casey. Thanks. I've been 
working on the railroad. Well, hello, Miss Wong. We're glad to be home again. So, Miss Wong, look, dear boy's hands, he got his blisters. Oh, hey, boy, dig. Hey, boy, swing your pick. Hey, boy, work all the live long day. Hey, boy, you and the boys did a fine job. Here. Come on in my room and sit down for a minute before you report into the hotel. Oh, no, no. Hey, boy, better huh. go stay ready to start back to work. And, uh, hey, boy, so glad to be home. Never going to leave Carlton Hotel again. Oh, hey, boy. Have to leave right away. He has to leave? Have Why? to leave. Oh, change. Ho Chang. Hey, boy's uncle in Salina. He's very he, sick. Ho? Ho. Oh, no. Miss Wong, you, you mean Hey Boy really has an uncle in Salinas? Oh, he sir. He's sick. Hey, boy must go. Well, hey, boy. This is like the boy who hollered wolf. Uh, he saw, uh, when he Hey Boy holler uncle. <laughs> Thirsty people everywhere prefer ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. And because it's light, it refreshes without filling. Charlie, be sociable. I am, Kay. Pepsi is a favorite of thirsty people from Maine to Hawaii, from Alaska to Florida. Charlie. It's perfect for parties or picnics. So serve Pepsi to your guests. That's helpful, but... This is the sociable part. Keep plenty of Pepsi ice-cold and ready. Remember, it goes fast because everybody likes Pepsi. Singing still sounds more inviting. May I? Be sociable, not smart. Keep up to date with Pepsi. Drink light, refreshing Pepsi. Stay young and fair and debonair. Be sociable, have a Pepsi. But singing doesn't say, pick up an extra carton of Pepsi today. Better yet, get a case. You do that. Gun will travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, he is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun Will Travel by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Gene Bates, Tim Graham, Charlie Lung, and Lawrence Dopkin. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun Will Travel. Thank you.